this work is uh, uh, experiment mostly done by myself uh, from my, my group and then the uh, uh, student Yang Ban Choi and the Yang Wu and then theory is most uh, by Professor Yang Lee's group especially the uh, second dome and sample fabrication and then the sample of cowboy was the help I got help from the uh, uh, case and the initial idea was supported by the team in the exact so like the university. So uh, after the introduction, I'd like to do uh, show the experimental result, which is the first part is uh, overflow on the high surface, and then second part is overflow in the high environment earth structure. So as I uh, we already uh, uh, learned from the professor the lecture, so small effect or example effect spin is a spin degree of freedom is quite slow and overflow is over degree of freedom has a quite slow. So uh, let me skip this part because you already uh, learned from the kind of this uh, lecture. And we focus on the titanium because the titanium has a large overflow texture. Uh, uh, it's the, it's the, uh, e is a D character that's hydrolyzed by the electric field. And then uh, as a result, we have a, a very large of the whole conductivity at around the whole thousand, while the skin whole conductivity is a four orders of magnitude is small. So it will be the ideal platform to investigate the, the whole effect. So, uh, so experimental method I used the uh, angle of the current effect. So it has a certain uh, uh, advantage. For example, it has a uh, uh, sensitive lighting system, especially for uh, weak spinobic coupling material. Light is much more sensitive and auto than the skin. Now, another advantage is the uh, uh, light can uh, distinguish the, the direction of the magnetization. It can uh, detect the outer plane magnetization, also in plane magnetization, and it can be distinguished. So using this uh, technique, I measured uh, this single titanium measure the optical accumulation on the surface and then pattern structure to measure the optical force. So uh, more has been already uh, used for the uh, skin community. For example, first, uh, simple measurement done by the Olamo and Garden Massa. In this case, they measured the outer plane skin accumulation on the channel edge. Uh, and uh, it is possible because uh, Dr. Master has very long skin division length zero of micrometer, so then you can detect edge accumulation. Also, the uh, uh, sense in the Kamadala group also measure the me uh, metallic system. Metallic system, you cannot measure this edge accumulation because edge accumulation length scale is a few nanometer, which is too small for the light detections. In this case, they measure the longitudinal, so they measure the wide component of magnetization on the top surface. So using this technique, they measure the spin of motion and the time and constant. So I use the same technique. In this case, uh, I use the uh, light source laser and focus on the sample with the oblique angle and then the uh, reflected light. The co-rotation of the reflect light is a uh, the combination of the light amplifier and the AC current source. And one of the key uh, issues is to hear the uh, noise level to so have a very sensitive detection. We use the co-rotation resolution of the less than 10 meter nano radian is required. And to do that, I uh, modulate the laser source uh, over than one to affect the laser noise. Uh, and our laser has a very small laser noise uh, over than one kilohertz modulation frequency. So the first experiment part is of the accumulation on top surface. The experiment uh, is mostly performed by the student and by the and the theory is done by the technical at first. So uh, first, I'd like to talk about the film structure and the property of the type film. When I measure the crystal structure, it has a uh, mostly one more one texture with the FCC with a small uh, component of the texture as well. And then electrical receivity almost uh, does not depend on thickness pretty much. It is uh, something around the 7.6 microohm per meter. <coughs> so this is a uh, experimental uh, data. So in a cross view, uh, this is titanium, and we inject the light with the only angle with a certain uh, angle of. Uh, five 
and then help you uh, this uh, uh, narrow channel with the channel width around the two, 20 micrometer and then try to control in this x direction and then optical completion be along the y component is uh, accumulated on the surface. And this is a more result with the scanning along the channel uh, screen. You see, uh, depending on the, this uh, incident angle, angle, the positive incident angle and the negative incident angle, we have uh, some different uh, uh, measurement result. It is because we have uh, uh, in this uh, geometry, we have a two components. One is the polar mode, which measures the outer plane of the radiation. The other one is the longitudinal mode, which measures the Y component of the radiation. So we can easily distinguish the Y component and the Z component because the, uh, only the longitudinal uh, mode has a change of sign with the incident angle, while the polar mode does not change its sign. So we can clearly distinguish this uh, Z component signal and the Y component signal. And all of the signal is uh, linearly proportional to child front, so it is not the heating effect. And we claiming that this uh, polar component is coming from the Earth's field uh, driven by the child current, while this longitudinal mode is coming from the orbital hole effect. So to claim this, uh, to support this planning, we made a reference sample. Reference sample actually has a three layer, bottom titanium and the middle thick silicon nitride insulated layer and top titanium. So in this case, the tidal current is uh, confined to the bottom titanium. And so therefore, uh, because of silicon nitride, the whole effect cannot exist in the tight uh, top titanium. But oil steel can penetrate through the silicon nitride and induce oil steel in tight uh, top titanium. And we measure the top titanium uh, mode response on the top titanium. So this is the comparison of the single titanium and then a three layer reference layer where the oil steel where the orbital hole effect is uh, blocked. In that case, you can see that the polar mode has the uh, same with uh, this uh, single titanium, while the longitudinal mode is, uh, is uh, disappeared. So from this result, uh, we can uh, confirm that if the polar mode signal is coming from the Earth's field, while the longitudinal mode is not. So our main focus is the uh, longitudinal mode. But before we move on to the longitudinal mode, let's discuss more about this uh, main field of the, this polar mode. From the main chip, uh, the Earth scale, uh, calculation of the Earth scale is very straightforward. Uh, using this uh, current, uh, current density in titanium, you can see that at the, uh, at the channel edge, we have Earth scale around the 15 Earth steel. And this gives you the core rotation of the 15 nano radius. So the connection between here and there gives you the uh, uh, determination of the amount of the constant of the titanium. So when there is oil spill and then titanium has a susceptibility, as a result, you have some induced monetization. When you compare the induced monetization with the correlation, you can calculate, you can uh, you can study this uh, monotropy constant, which gives you the uh, the kind of cheap uh, estimation of the monetization. And to do that, you need to know what is the uh, susceptibility. Susceptibility calculation is rather straightforward. In this titanium, the uh, contribution is mostly known by the Bamblack paramagnetism. Using this uh, Bamblack paramagnetism calculation, we obtain this uh, or, uh, susceptibility for orbital magnetization. And uh, from this value, uh, we, uh, we confirm that uh, this uh, uh, amount of the constant for orbital magnetization. So we also uh, do the similar. Uh, we also do the uh, similar uh, calculation for steam. Steam has a very uh, uh, steam also has a very considerable susceptibility. However, because the uh, high has a very weak spin orbit coupling, the uh, of the constant for the steam is about uh, two orders of magnitude smaller than this. Term. So now let's focus on the, this uh, longitudinal mode signal here. So we measure the longitudinal mode with the real part and imaginary part as function of high thickness. As you can see here, it is uh, not that monotonic, especially when you look at the imaginary part, uh, uh, real part, 
it changed its sign around the 44, uh, 45 nanometer, and the imaginary part does not have sign change, but it keeps going. So let me compare this uh, thickness dependence with the uh, uh, previously no, uh, previously report with the platinum. We also measure the core rotation on the platinum, and the core rotation on the platinum is uh, dominated by the symbolic effect. In that case, uh, it is a uh, thickness dependence is rather, uh, rather simple. So it starts to grow and saturate on the dirty actor. So this saturation is because of the platinum's in diffusion length is rather uh, short, around the less than 10 nanometer. As a result, we have a very uh, uh, saturation, very early saturation around the dirty Then. Uh, the indication of the keep growing it, uh, suggests that uh, the optical diffusion length might be longer. So uh, the thickness dependence can be explained by the this region. So this one is the uh, orbital profile along the titanium thickness, and the uh, the other part is a light penetration effect. Light has a uh, penetration depth over titanium. It is around the trans nanometer. As a result, you have uh, this. Uh, Backup or light penetration. And if you, uh, so as long as you know the optical or uh, the profile, we can calculate this uh, thickness dependence. So for the optical profile, we assume that it is uh, quite similar with the spin situation. So you have uh, in, inside of uh, titanium, you have a uh, optical current generation, but at the bottom and top boundary, uh, optical current is uh, blocked. So as a result, you have a certain accumulation of orbital top surface and bottom surface. So then an uh, important parameter would be orbital division length. When you have a very short orbital division length, you have a very narrow distribution. When you have a very long division length, you have a nearly uh, linear profile. So when you calculate this uh, equation with the different orbital division length, you will see that uh, depending on the orbital division length, the calculation result is uh, quite different. So that means we can determine the orbital division length from the thickness dependence. So from the building with the uh, experiment with the uh, uh, calculation, we determine the orbital division length is uh, 74 nanometer. Uh, if we assume it is coming from the skin, we can also uh, fit with uh, this imaginary part with the uh, uh, with the similarly with the division length of the eighty nanometer or something. But uh, in case of the real part, uh, you see it is somewhat different. Uh, the reason is because for uh, our calculation for one of the constant for the skin is uh, imaginary part is uh, of the three times larger than the real part. For the optical uh, magnetization, it is uh, more comparable. As a result, uh, you have uh, not only the, the this, uh, not only the magnitude, but also the shape is somewhat uh, different with the simple effect. Then let me also try to explain the magnitude. Maybe it is something around the 100 nanometer radian. If we are uh, trying to explain this uh, with the symbol effect, we found it is uh, too small. For example, small conductivity of titanium is uh, OE, and the magnetic concept is very small. As a result, the calculate the spinor uh, color rotation is around the one nanometer radian. It's uh, too small to be explained. Uh, then what about the orbital hole effect? So in case of orbital hole effect is the conductivity is around uh, 4,000. And the amount of the constant is uh, quite large compared to the skin. When we just consider this one and that one, uh, we uh, predict a uh, uh, gigantic correlation like uh, 10,000 nanometer radian. But in reality, uh, we, we got something around the 100. So the, there's, uh, the reason is because we think that it is due to the orbital function. So when all parts accumulate in the high surface, so the patching effect is quite significant and it reduced by the effect of 100. So then uh, to uh, support this idea of the optical hole effect, we also perform the optical hole. So it is quite uh, uh, important in terms of the device application because we, anyway, we need to be uh, able to manipulate the parametric monetization using the optical current. 
So this experiment is mostly done by the my student Yong Wen Han, and the theory is supported by the book uh, uh, David Jones. So in this case, we use the two different types of hacker structure. One is the uh, titanium and ferromagnetic bilayer. The other one is uh, uh, ferromagnetic titanium platinum and the ferromagnetic. So the reason for this uh, two-layer structure is uh, for technical issue. We found that without the platinum, there is a significant intermixing between the titanium and the ferromagnets. As a result, the monetized structure, monetized has been decreased a lot. For example, nickel, it is almost a 50% of reduction in sulfur, and for other uh, cobalt, it is uh, around this 40% uh, reduction. So this kind of significant uh, intermixing of uh, 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 leads to some uh, very small uh, uh, okay, efficiency. I will show you later. But when I insert the platinum, uh, the the saturation monetization recovery is above a birth value. The reason for this uh, 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 monetization reduction, we can think about this intermixing. For example, when we compare the phase diagram of the Nickel titanium and nickel platinum. Nickel titanium has a somewhat larger solubility at the room temperature. But also, platinum uh, is known to do not destroy the ferromagnetic system that easily, even though it is a uh, uh, mix. But uh, for other material like the vanadium, are known to decrease the magnetization very quickly. So, for this reason, we use this kind of uh, clearly structure to avoid the intermixing issue. So for talk, uh, to analyze the magnitude of the we also we also you have to click the the, the screen by by mouse. We also use the minus dosing curve effect from the ferromagnetic layer. So in this case, uh, I need to care about the, not only the linear mode signal, but also this product mode signal. I found that the, this product mode signal is also very significant. So uh, the reason is because um, uh, the coefficient is uh, very small compared to the linear mode, it is around the 30 times smaller. However, when you compare to the delta mg, delta mg has to overcome the demonetization field. So delta mg is somewhat small. But the delta my it does not compete with the demonetization field, so it can be very large. So uh, for uh, quantification, we need to be able to separate this delta mg and delta y component. Fortunately, uh, we can separate uh, this delta mg and delta y because the linear mode does not depend on the light polarization and <coughs> however, the product mode has a cosine dependence. So when the, it is uh, aligned with the magnification, product mode signal becomes uh, zero. When it is aligned to the 45 degree, it becomes a system. So, for example, here for high nickel bilayer and high platinum nickel bilayer, you see that uh, there is a offset component. Offset component is coming from the linear mode, so it is coming from the delta and z. And then cosine component is coming from the product mode, and it is coming from the delta and y. So, uh, from this angle dependence, we can distinguish mz and my. In addition, we can also distinguish this MZ and MY using the external field dependence. As I said before, MZ has to overcome this uh, demonetization field, so it is almost independent of the external small external field. But the uh, MY, uh, the public uh, is a denominator, there is external field and the uh, ion field. But the uh, vertical side field, ion inflate ion field is very simple, so it is almost inversely proportional to external field. So you have all these uh, different uh, dependence, and in eight minutes in measurement, eight minutes okay. in measurement, you see there is a clear uh, distinction between the MZ and MY component. 
So I take the MZ component at the uh, polarized angle of uh, 45 degree, and I took the MY component by taking the difference as the measurement of data uh, 0 degree and 45 degree. So uh, after the separation, I analyze the dimming light flow from the MZ component. MZ component has a two contribution. One is the uh, dimming light flow, and the other one is the uh, D component or spill. And this one can be also very uh, clear separation because the uh, horse scale has anti-symmetric profile, but the dental light book is a flat profile. Using this flat profile, I measure the whole efficiency, something like here. So uh, uh, by layer, I, I found that the poke efficiency is quite small. Um, uh, the reason is because of the beating due to the intermixing. But when we uh, insert the platinum layer, intermixing is the result. As a result, we have a very large poke efficiency. Essentially, the increasing trend with, as a function of high thickness is due to the orbital hole effect. From this one, I can get the two information. One is the orbital division length around the 70 nanometer, which is consistent with the orbital accumulation uh, result. And another one is the effective orbital whole angle, which is around the 0.13. In addition to the dental light talk, I also investigate the field light talk. The reason is because uh, while the, in case of the skin talk, we know that the dental light talk is the dominant of the field light talk. But the orbital talk mechanism is quite different. As a result, uh, theoretically, uh, field light talk can be comparable to the dental light talk. So that is the reason why I uh, on to investigate the field light probe as well. To do that, I performed the two different experiments. One is the charge current driven uh, case. In case of charge current, you have uh, both the field light probe and or still on the Y position. And I also performed uh, just a minor field driven correlation. In the case, I insert the Helmholtz coil, so if you generate the AC minor field along the Y direction, so they indicate the only drive force is the part of the uh, still or uh, my still. So, field uh, light probe analysis is quite challenging because the horse still and the uh, field light probe has the same symmetry. You cannot easily decompose this one. To decompose these two factors, I initially I tried to use a reference sample, for example, inserting certain right drive between the high and paramount layer. So in that case, I can clearly see some difference with the charge current driven experiment. So initially, I tried to conclude that uh, this one has very strict, uh, strong field light flow. But I found that this quality mode coefficient is very sensitive on the film structure. So if I just uh, do the minus field driven uh, 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 correlation, in this case, I found that uh, this two sample has a quite different uh, signal. That is due to the, this uh, further mode signal is uh, different a lot in this sample structure. So when I compare this one and this one, you see that it is uh, quite similar. As a result, I conclude that this structure has a uh, rather weak field light force. Now I investigate uh, the, the other example, which has a very large field uh, light force. In that case, when I compare the charge current driven and the minus field driven, you see that the uh, current driven has a very large difference between the reference sample and the actual sample compared to the, this uh, uh, field driven case. As a result, from this uh, difference, I can claim that the uh, field light probe can be very, very significant in this uh, sample structure. Uh, can we, how many slides do you have? So uh, this is all, I think. Okay, great. So, uh, <laughs> so, so we uh, look at the optical accumulation of that top, and the uh, optical diffusion length is quite consistent. But the uh, magnitude uh, for the uh, optical accumulation magnitude is quite suppressed due to the quenching. But the uh, top measurement, I see that the uh, quenching effect is not that significant, mostly because the optical can be quickly absorbed by the microlayer. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>